One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video guys. Okay, so today, last, last week we talked about uh, demand and like the safety bid. And I'm, I'm gonna go over BPTH because I was kind of talking about that one today as an example. Uh, but this week I wanted to talk about supply, you know, kind of get a basis for supply. Supply is the other half of that equation to the demand in trading. Supply is what longs need to be always on the lookout for, but for shorts, it's what you want to see to join, right? To join that winning side. And supply can come in multiple forms in small cap stock. You can find supply in long-term bag holders, swing longs, recent bag holders, intraday bag holders, intraday longs, and fresh shorts. These are all the different types of supply. Like it's just, they're just sell orders, but they're coming from different places, right? And so keeping track of what place the supply is coming from, you know, it's, you're most likely going to be able to alter in a positive manner, how you view the price action that you're watching and, it, and you know, watching or trading. And it can really alter a lot of things. Like it can alter how, how long you're willing to wait on this trade, you know, where your targets are um, based on the, what kind of supply you expect to come in, you know, what your risk on the trade is. Like if it's recent bag holders, I tend to risk more because I love that setup as opposed to just being like, you know what, there's probably sellers up here um, or intraday bag holders, right? Like maybe just bag holders today, whereas, you know, there might be bag holders from yesterday on a hundred million share volume candle. I said 100 million as if that's a lot. That's not even a lot anymore. You know, something like 500 million shares of volume the previous day, like that, you know, I'm going to be more patient. I'm probably going to risk more. It might go bigger size. It might even dis execution or not. If I think that there's only just new shorts blocking it, like for example, like on a VWAP reclaim trade, if I don't think there's a lot of bag holders and I think, and the stock is stalling and meeting some resistance. And I think that that resistance is just new shorts entering like new shorts right now, currently entering. I'm fucking holding that shit. I'm holding that shit. I might even add to it. Right. But if I think that it's running into stalling action and I think it's from yesterday's bag holders, I'm not I, like, I might, I'm going to be quicker to sell, right. And it's going to alter how I trade depending on where I think the supply is coming from. And so a quick tip I, I need to go over actual float versus trading float. The actual float of a stock is what you guys uh, think of when you hear float. It's the shares outstanding minus those restricted and institutionally held shares, right? Um, the trading float, however, can be different, right? The trading float is how many shares are currently being traded today, right? That's like the, the current trading float. For example, like let's say there's 3 million shares in the float, 1 million shares institutionally held, like it's 30% institutionally held. And that leaves a 2 million share float. But if like there's retail traders that own dispersed somewhere, just, you know, mom and pops, whatever, that own a million shares all across the world, you only have a 1 million share float. And like, they're not day traders. They just, you know, collectively around the world, hundred shares at a time, maybe, you know, or 500 shares at a time, right? Like there's just collectively a million shares out of that float. Guess how many shares are being moved? Only a million shares are being moved. And so that, that 3 million share float turned into a 1 million share float, but it can also increase, right? So there could be like that same scenario where it's only trading 1 million shares, but then it gets up and all of a sudden, like people start looking at their, their portfolios on the day it's on the news and they say, I want to start, I want to sell my shares. And now a million shares get sold from those people, say, for example, now there's 2 million shares back in the float double. Right now, one to two is still low, but I mean, the, the concept is the same. It can increase and decrease according to the level of shares that decide to either refrain from trading or initiate trading. One thing I want to talk about is heaviness, right? So heaviness, a, a very important element of supply. Heaviness occurs when there's a change in the balance of supply and demand. The price hasn't corrected. So there's a market inefficiency. Like the stock is really heavy, indicating more supply than demand, but it hasn't like tanked, but the price hasn't corrected for that even balance yet. You'll normally be able to identify heaviness um, when stocks can't bounce. That's the, that's the number one tell. When normal price action would reasonably produce bounces and the stocks fail to produce, that stock will often be referred to as heavy. And heaviness stocks will have the following signs. They won't be able to bounce. For me, I think this is the best indicator. They'll have weak bounce attempts. They'll try to bounce on like a micro time frame, and you'll notice they'll run into wicks. Like it just, they'll, like if you pay attention at level two, it'll try to bounce and fail and try to bounce and fail. Like it's literally trying, 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 and it's gonna just give up. Stacked level twos, uh, refresh sellers, right? You know, 
sellers that are there lift and then come back lower volume. Um, the thing about lower volume guys, that's actually an element of demand and not supply, but heaviness has that hint of the demand as well. Like if, if volume starts to lower then bid starts to wane, but that's, it, t it typically starts out with the same amount of volume, but not the same amount of price increase that the old volume was creating. And then the volume lowers. And that's, that's like one of the last signs, I guess, one of the later signs of the heaviness is when the volume starts to decay after that. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and moderators at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Top wicks, like I just said. Stocks being heavy, it's literally my favorite scenario for shorts. They are my favorite and a favorite scenario for short sellers because heaviness tends to stack. And what I mean by stack is heaviness tends to get heavier and heavier, which means like when you can spot it, they tend to work. And so it stacks because it normally accumulates more longs, like longs that were longs right buying the dip right here and longs that were buying the dip right here and longs that were buying the dip right here. Well, these guys aren't getting sells and so it's starting to fade and then these guys get filled and they're trying to get sells but it's not working and then these guys get you know like these guys these guys and these guys finally get filled now they have their sells out and nobody's getting it like the wicks are barely moving that's heaviness right and it just accumulates more and more longs as the varying orders lower get all get hit uh it typically causes short sellers to get restless because guess guess not only are longs not getting their sales, guess who's not getting their shorts? And so shorts start moving down and down and down, adding to that heaviness, and that's how it stacks. And, and that's what a stock looks like when it's heavy. It'll literally kind of like start to lean. Uh, you'll see that on the chart. And so shorts must be careful of this action when there's SSR. This is the same kind of action that you'll see on SSR, but shorts have to be careful because this is the same kind of shit that causes you to get swiped. Just wanted to point that out there. And you also have to be careful when it's way above VWAP and still up mid morning. If you start to see that heaviness, like 10 o'clock, 10, 10, 10 o'clock or 10.30 when that stock's like up there still and it starts to look heavy, that could, that could so be a trap. And you have to be careful of that. Like it's better when you see that like kind of like late morning, midday, late day, that kind of stuff. When it's still mid morning and it still has that like strong volume, and then it kind of feigns a little bit of volume, like a lower volume like that. So many times it'll just do that and swipe back and you'll get trapped. So you have to be careful like if it's still in the morning and you see heaviness, morning time heaviness and SSR is where you have to be careful. Anyway, uh, spotting and using supply, right? So besides the obvious look to the left, like I don't wanna go over that basic stuff in this, in this webinar where you look to the left, you know, on the daily chart and yesterday's chart and basically left side resistance, right? That's obvious. Um, we all know that look for broken charts um, on multiple time frames. but it's normally gonna happen on, like I said, that tide change. Volume will stay consistent, but price won't keep going higher, which means, you know, there's still the same amount of buying, but supply has entered the building, right? And this is, and then this is normally followed by that lower volume as it starts to, to lean. EBK, when I start to sniff supply coming into the stock, one, I just, I always plan for a retest of the big level before getting to full. And this is honestly more in those MRIN situations. Like when, it, when I start to sniff that out, I want to see a retest of the big level and then see it finally get slammed. I really like, that's the ultimate confirmation for me. Um, and evidence of supply, like action on, like when you're watching liquidity traps, right? Like you see a stock go up and stuff basically. Uh, a liquidity trap or a lift of the offer, right? Like a refresh seller, a lift of the offer and then back on, that's a liquidity trap. Um, top wicks, like I said, like on that one, like, like top wicks that just don't get very high. Slowing down of the momentum, sharp slams, like uh, which is basically the next one, blood in the water cracks, like that's a term you guys know, that's, that's an evidence of supply. And lower than expected dips. Like when the stock dips and it goes like, whoa, like I wanted to buy a dip on four. I didn't expect it to get the 360, that kind of stuff.
Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.